Hi everybody, welcome to our next lecture on the idea of forces, and today we're going to see how to put together Newton's law of motion, particularly Newton's second law, uh, and the idea of free body diagrams, particularly when we're dealing now with multiple forces. If we remember Newton's second law of motion, it said that the acceleration of an object is directly proportional to the force applied and inversely proportional to its mass, or in other words, F equals ma. But that wasn't the whole story. You see, that works nicely when you have a single force. But quite often, as we saw with free body diagrams, we often have multiple forces acting at once. So how do we deal with that? Well, it's the real version of Newton's second law. Basically what Newton's second law is, is, is not that F equals ma, but the net force acting on an object equals ma. In other words, if I add up all the forces that are acting on it, not just one force, but all of them, that gives me mass times acceleration. In other words, take the sum of all forces acting on the object. Again, on the object, not created by the object, but acting directly on the object. In fancy math, it's written like this, uh, with the Greek letter sigma, which means to sum up or add up. So Newton's second law of motion says that the sum of all forces equals ma. In other words, the net force is equal to ma. So let's see how all of this works. In our first example, we've got two people who are going to move our large crate here. It has a mass of 100 kilograms. So let's say that the person on the left is going to push with a force. I'll call that F1. And the person on the right is going to pull with some sort of force that I'll call F2. Let's say I know the person on the left is capable of pushing with 15 newtons of force, and the person on the right is capable of pulling with 10 newtons of force. And I want to know the rate of acceleration of the crate. Now, I know some of you might be able to figure this out right away, just by sort of looking at it. But I want to show you a method in which to understand when it gets more complicated than this. So, we're going to follow a couple of steps here. The first step, draw a free body diagram. So let's do that. So there's my crate. Of course, we always want to start with our favorite force, weight, mg, acting down. It's sitting on a surface as it's moved along, so that must mean there's a normal force acting upward. We have the person on the left pushing with force F1, and the person on the right pulling with force F2. Next thing I want to do is I want to follow Newton's second law, which, as we said, says that the sum of all forces equals mass times acceleration. But you'll also note that some forces are acting horizontally and some forces are acting vertically. So they're not all acting in the same direction. And in physics, when things act in very different directions, we always want to sort of separate those things out. So if we consider sort of the way the axes look, so we have a y-axis for up and down and an x-axis for left and right. First of all, what I want to do is sum all the forces just in the x or the horizontal direction. So let's look what I have here. I only have two arrows pointing horizontally. And they're both pointing in the exact same direction, both positive. So I'm going to add them together, force 1 plus force 2. And then, according to Newton's second law, the sum of any forces must equal mass times acceleration. Now, let's do the same thing in the y direction. Now, in the y direction, I have two forces. But one is pointing in the positive y direction, and one is pointing in the negative y direction. So if I were to write this properly, adding them together, well, the normal force plus a negative weight force, or that would be the same thing as simply subtracting. Newton's law says that the sum of all those forces has to equal ma, but I'm going to write 0. Now, why do you think? Well, the reason why is that this crate is not moving up or down. Now, that's kind of neat, because if you look at what you've written there, if I add mg to the other side, this statement says, that these two forces are equal, and they must be, 
because if one was greater than the other, then the crate would move in that direction, but it doesn't. But let's look at the important equation, this one that was given to me. F1 plus F2 equals MA. Notice, I've created my own equation here. And not only have I done that, I know where I can put all my numbers. I know that F1 is 15, I know that F2 is 10, and I know the mass is 100, leaving my acceleration as my unknown. So, I end up with an acceleration of positive 0.25 meters per second squared. Notice that the net force is positive, and therefore the acceleration is positive. Net force and acceleration must always be in the same direction, have the same vector sign. Now I know some of you are thinking, well, I could have done that without all of this mess. But the important thing was this equation that we wrote here. You see, it doesn't matter what the numbers were. Okay, Whether that was 15 and 10, it could have been 50 and 62, it could be any numbers. Okay. What this equation shows me is what's happening in this situation regardless of the numbers. And that's the way physics has to work. It should work regardless of what the numbers are. So that equation allows me to put any numbers possible in it. And that's the neat thing about it. Let's look at another example. Well, here are our guys again. And this time, though, let's say our person on the left is going to push with 30 newtons. But the person on the right is going to be a jerk and push the other way with, let's say, 10 newtons. And we want to know the acceleration now. Well, let's start with the free body diagram. Still have the weight and the normal force. We have force F1 pushing to the right. And then we're going to have force F2 pushing to the left. Now again, keeping in mind what positive directions are, if I sum my forces in the x and the horizontal, well now I have two forces that act opposite each other, one in the positive and one in the negative. Sum of my forces has to equal ma. At the other side, Normal is positive, weight is negative, but again, those must equal zero. Those must balance out. Okay, they are balanced, otherwise this thing would move up or down. And whenever things are in balance, they tend to not accelerate in any direction. Once again, I've got an equation here. And now I can put in my numbers. F1 is 30, F2 is 10. Mass of this crate is 200, giving an acceleration of 0 0.1 meters per second squared. Positive, okay? Now again, because the net force, which came out to positive 20, so once again, net force and acceleration must be in the same direction. But we also notice that it's a lower acceleration for two reasons. One, the net force is lower than the previous example, and the mass is greater, all of that contributing to a lower acceleration. Hey, Newton's second law works pretty well, doesn't it? Let's look at another example. This is a picture of an elevator that has a mass of 600 kilograms. And there's an elevator cable that, of course, allows it attached to a motor to rise up and down. And let's say in this situation that our elevator is accelerating upward at 0.2 meters per second squared. And the idea is, well, how much tension is on that elevator cable? So to begin with, let's look at the free body diagram. Okay. Well, of course, the elevator has a certain weight, mg. And there's a rope attached to the top of the elevator, and ropes can only pull, so there's a tension pulling upward. Now, it's not sitting any, on anything, so there is no normal force, so that's largely it. Now, again, considering the way directions move, if I were to sum my forces in the horizontal direction, well, I don't see any. So that's 0. Now, this time, though, 
in the y, or the vertical direction, I have tension, which is positive, and weight, which is negative. So they subtract, and that has to equal ma. Okay? Those aren't in balance, okay? so the elevator can accelerate upward. But again, what I've done is I've created an equation. It allows me to put in values. Tension, which I don't know. Now, weight. The mass is 600. What about gravity? Now, if you remember from motion, we used negative 10 for gravity throughout all of motion, projectile motion, things like that. But here, I'm going to use positive 10. And the reason why is because the negative has been taken care of for me right here in the equation. So that's one of the nice things about free body diagrams and summing forces is your vector direction is taken care of. You don't have to think about it as much as you do with motion. And in fact, really from this point on, I'm always going to use positive 10 unless I'm using free fall or projectile motion problems. And the reason why is because basically the vectors will all take care of themselves if I'm doing free body diagrams. So, tension, 1,000, the mass, 600, accelerating at 0.2, and that gives me a tension of 6,120 newtons. Now, let's think about why that makes sense. What's the weight of the elevator? Well, weight is mg, which in this case would be 600 times 10, or 6,000 newtons. Now, if you think about it, the cable needs to hold 6,000 newtons just to hold the elevator from falling. If I wanted to go upward now, I need something greater than 6,000 newtons. So that's where that extra 120 comes from. An extra 120 upward allows the elevator to move, or accelerate, upward. What if I change this? Look, it looks like the same problem, but let's say the elevator is accelerating downward. Well, turns out, first of all, that doesn't change my free body diagram. I still have weight pulling down. I still better have tension pulling up. I don't want my cable to push, because that would mean it wouldn't exist and my elevator would now be in free fall. That would be a very bad thing. Now, since the elevator is moving downward. It's a little trick I can do in physics. I'm going to do this. I'm going to say the down is the positive direction. And I can do that. It makes my life a lot easier when it comes to doing physics. Whichever way I'm moving, I'm just going to call that positive. Convenient, isn't it? Now, if I sum my forces in the horizontal, well, there still aren't any. Now, in the vertical, since I'm calling down positive, that makes mg, the weight, a positive value. And tension is now pointing in the negative direction. So that means I'm also accelerating in the positive direction. And that makes life a lot easier for me to always be accelerating in the positive direction. Now, if I put in my values, mass is 600, Gravity, positive 10, and it makes sense because we're accelerating in a new positive direction. Minus tension, positive 0.2. And then this gives me 5,880 newtons. Now again, think about how much sense this makes. The weight of the elevator is 6,000 newtons. If I wanted to hold still, I need a tension of 6,000 newtons. But if I wanted to move downward, I need a little bit less than that. Now, I don't want zero tension, because that would be free fall, and that would be bad in elevator. But if I just lessen the tension by a little bit, the elevator automatically moves downward. So it all makes sense. Now, one other aspect that's very, very important in the idea of how we deal with net force and Newton's second law is something called equilibrium. Now, I've kind of alluded to this already. But when an object is in equilibrium, it means that the net force, the sum of all forces, is zero. The net force is zero. Now, if net force is, is zero, then the acceleration is also zero. 
Now, keep in mind what a zero acceleration means. It means two possible situations. The object could be at rest, or the object can be moving at a constant velocity. So, for example, if we had a situation where we had someone pushing something across the floor, and we were to look at the free body diagram of it right now, well, we would have the weight acting down. It's sitting on a surface, so there's a normal force acting up. And there is a person pushing to the right. Now, if you look at this free body diagram, it is impossible for this to be equilibrium. Now, up and down is in equilibrium because we can say in the up and down direction that the normal force is positive, the weight is negative, and that that net force is zero because the object doesn't move up or down. In the up or down direction, it has zero acceleration, and that makes sense. But if we were to look at it in the horizontal, we only have the person pushing. And there would need to be a balancing force for this to be in equilibrium. So we can't have a single force equal zero. So it's impossible to have a single force exist and have equilibrium. In other words, what we'll need is some other force, some other thing, acting to the left. Okay. Now, for example, that later on might be called friction, or it could be, you know, again, somebody else who's sort of helping out there, or maybe not helping in this case, uh, pushing against this. If we have that other force, force push two, now we can have an equilibrium situation. And what that says is that those two forces must be equal to each other. They must be balanced. And that would make sense. That would be a situation where something was in equilibrium. The forces are perfectly balanced. Here's sort of the tricky part. It makes sense that if both of them were pushing equally, the box would not move anywhere. It would stay at rest. That's, it makes sense to us all. But it's also possible for them both to be pushing with the exact same force and the object is in motion. But that's only in one situation. If the object is moving at a constant velocity, then the net force must be zero also. Okay? And again, that fits very much with Newton's first law of motion, where Newton basically said, being at rest, and being at a constant velocity are exactly the same thing. So there you have it. Newton's second law and how it really works in terms of its complexity, how free body diagrams fit in, and how we can really understand multiple forces acting on an object. See you next time.